everybody. Well, it's day one. And we've had a great morning. And as we head into the afternoon, it's time to go to work. And so thank you all for being here. You know, this is a special office. This office was the historical working office of the governor. And for the last two years, uh, it hasn't been used. And so I am very excited that we are all together right now going to work on day one in this office. I'm going to sign 11 executive actions, nine executive orders, and two executive directors, directives. These executive actions combined with the 59 bills that are being carried in our legislature right now by delegates and senators and 25 budget amendments comprise the actions necessary to put our day one game plan into motion. Virginians set us he sent us here to get things done. They sent us here to deliver on promises made. And so the executive actions, the nine executive orders, and the two executive directors that we're going to sign today are going to do just that. We're going to bring the cost of living down. We're going to reestablish expectations of excellence in our schools. We're going to make our community safe again. We're going to reinvigorate this economy so that we can, in fact, generate jobs for everyone. And we're going to make a Virginia government that works for Virginians and stops telling us what to do all the time. Friends, this is an exciting moment. And I just appreciate all of you being here with us. This is Virginia. And this is Virginia going to work. So Madam Secretary, are you ready to go to work? Okay, let's go. This is executive order number one. Ending the use of inherently divisive concepts, including critical race theory, and restoring excellence in K through 12 public education in the Commonwealth. I'm particularly excited to be joined by our Secretary of Education designee, Amy Gadara. This is executive order number two, reaffirming the rights of parents in the upbringing, education, and care of their children. This executive order particularly addresses the rights of parents to, in fact, make a decision with regards to whether their children wear a mask in school. Executive order number three, restoring integrity and confidence in the Virginia Parole Board and the Commonwealth system of criminal justice. We'll be replacing all five members of the Parole Board with five new members. And oh, by the way, I'm particularly pleased to have our Secretary Designee of Public Safety. Sheriff Mosier with me. This is executive order number four. Authorizing an investigation of the Loudoun County Public Schools by the Attorney General. We know that we have to keep our children safe. We also know 
but looking forward, in order to make the right changes, we have to know what's happened in the rearview mirror. And in this moment, I can't tell you how pleased I am to be partnered with Jason Miares as we, in fact, do the work that restores, restores power to parents and make sure that we have transparency in our schools. It's executive order number five. One of the things we talked about in the campaign was that we were going to make a Virginia government work for us. And in fact, establishing immediately audits so that we will know what's happened in government, but most importantly, that we have a government that is efficient, that's transparent, in fact, does the work of the people. So executive order number five establishes the position of Commonwealth Chief Transformation Officer and initiating a review of the Department of Motor Vehicles and the Virginia Employment Commission. Our Chief Transformation Officer, Eric Mueller, is at a family wedding. And I think when your son's getting married, that's where you should be. <laughs> Executive order number six. Most succinctly, I can say this executive order keeps Virginia open for business. We'll remove burdensome COVID-19 regulations. We, in fact, will direct every secretary here to reduce by 25% job-killing regulations. We, in fact, know that we can do this and make Virginia, the best place, the best place to do business. This is executive directive number one that in fact picks up from the previous executive order. And it in fact instructs each one of our secretaries to go do the work, to find those regulations that can be cut so that in fact Virginia is the most business friendly state in the union. The target is 25%. And we'll all be disappointed if we don't exceed that target and in fact, exceed Virginians' expectations for the work we're about to do. This is executive order number seven. The very, very first policy initiative that we introduced on this campaign was a topic that Suzanne and I feel very strongly about, and that's eradicating human trafficking. Executive order number seven establishes the Commission on Human Trafficking. It establish, establishes a priority on prevention and survivor support. And Sheriff Mosier, all the things that we're going to ask you to do are important. But this was the number one thing that we said we were going to do. I also want to add that when we announced this policy, I was joined by Tanya Gould. And Tanya is an absolute hero. She's a survivor. She's a winner. She's an extraordinary leader and servant. And Tanya, thank you for being with us today.
This is executive order number eight. And as we talked about earlier today, we together are going to strengthen the spirit of Virginia. And one of the areas that we have seen a troubling and alarming increase in is actually hate crimes directed towards the Jewish community. So executive order number eight establishes a commission to combat anti-Semitism in the Commonwealth of Virginia. The commission will make recommendations to my office and the General Assembly. The, com the Commonwealth has been a leader in religious freedom since the earliest days of our nation. And we will once again lead the way in ensuring religious freedom and equality for all Virginians. I'd like to thank my friends Bruce and Connie Meyer for all of your support. Thank you. It's been there since then. Executive order number nine. This executive order withdraws Virginia from the regional greenhouse gas initiative. We are going to protect Virginians from rising cost of living due to the regional greenhouse gas initiative. The regional greenhouse gas initiative, as I said before, is nothing more than a carbon tax. It's a carbon tax that raises the utility bills of all Virginians, hard-working Virginians. It's not what it was advertised to be. It's a bad deal for Virginia. And so this executive order absolutely puts all secretaries, but particularly it directs the director of the Department of Environmental Quality and the Secretary of Natural Resources to reevaluate Virginia's participation in the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative and immediately begin the regulatory process to get us out of it. Secretary of Natural Resources, Secretary of Natural and Historic Resources, Andrew Wheeler, I want to thank you so much for all the work that I know you will do on behalf of the Commonwealth. Executive Directive number two. This executive director, directive is signed to ensure the privacy and the protection of the individual rights of the employees who work for the executive branch. This executive director ensures the health care privacy of the executive branch employees, particularly when it comes to our fight against COVID-19 vaccination requirements. No executive branch employees shall be required to be vaccinated or required to disclose their vaccination status as a condition of their employment. Let me be clear. I continue to be a absolutely staunch advocate for the vaccine. I've gotten the vaccine. I've gotten the booster. Suzanne has gotten the vaccine and gotten the booster. We believe it's the best way to keep your family safe. But we also believe that individual liberty counts, matters. And therefore, rather than mandate, we're going to go to work to educate. We're going to go to work to have colleagues talk to colleagues, but allow people to make decisions about their own health. We can do this. We can beat COVID-19 without infringing on the individual liberties that we hold so dear. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for being here today. 
We're going to work. We're going to work because there's important work to do. This is why we're here. As I said, nine executive orders, two executive directives, 59 bills that are being carried by our colleagues in the House and the Senate, 25 budget amendments. The day one game plan is going into motion. The day one game plan that is going to work in order to bring our cost of living down, to make sure that Virginia has the best schools, the best jobs, it's the safest place to live, and that it's a Virginia where we see our government working for us and protecting our liberties. My fellow Virginians, this is a really, really exciting day. And as I said all along, I knew I'd be overwhelmed by a sense of emotion, of honor, of the opportunity and privilege to go to work for all Virginians. And here we go, it's day one, and we are going to work. <laughs>